Hello and welcome to Finextra TV. I'm Hannah Wallace and we're reporting from UK FinTech Week at IFGS in London. Kindly joining me now from KPMG is Dr. Kay Swinburne. Hi Kay, thank you so much for taking the time out of the busy event to come speak with us. A pleasure. Really good to have you on. And I know it is uh, a busy event for you. You're going to be uh, on a panel session later today talking about embedded finance, uh, who is leading the payments revolution. So a really interesting one. Uh, and I know in that session you're going to be covering some of the big trends that are really rocking the boat in the financial services industry uh, today. So let's start there. What do you think those trends are? So I think for me, embedded finance is a huge one and it's really omnipresent. It cuts across so many different areas and people don't even often realize that there is an embedded finance product that they're actually engaging with. And so you know, there's some big issues here with regards to consumers and there are some big issues business to business and then what happens in potentially trade finance going forwards or indeed the insurance sector. So embedded finance is a really lovely broad topic but one that actually covers a lot of work that the fintechs do. And then outside of that, there's a whole load, I think, still going on with reg tech, or if you then look into various things like the technology underpinning crypto, then that is still something I think is really worth keeping an eye on because I think we're about to see some of the mainstream financial services providers embrace some of those, whether it's through tokenization or other parts of the system. I think there's a lot going on right now. Very exciting time in UK FinTech. It is indeed a very positive note to lead off there. Uh, and there are a lot of opportunities to be had uh, this year and the next two years. Uh, but what are some of the risks and maybe challenges that uh, large corporations need to consider moving forward? So I think there's always a regulatory perimeter here. So people who haven't been regulated up until now actually coming into a regulatory envelope, it's really important that they understand what that means. And for all those who are regulated at the moment, whether it's as a payments firm or indeed as a credit firm, whatever it might be, or indeed as a bank, yeah. however they embrace this, they need to actually be aware that it's a changing regulatory framework. Policymakers around the globe are looking at this. They are looking in particular at the route to consumer. So where the consumer needs protecting a little more than maybe they are currently. And we're seeing that very clearly here in the UK with the consumer duty obligation that's going on to all financial services providers come the summer and that deadline is coming fast up. So when you see that coming, you know the direction of travel, but it's not just about regulatory compliance in that instance, it's about getting the culture right. Are you as a small fintech firm really embracing the journey to serving that customer correctly? Are you servicing their needs, not just your own or indeed some third party's needs? And that journey is going to be a really difficult for one for some and a really easy one for others. All right, that's really interesting. Some good advice weaved in there um, as well. And from the smaller fintechs to the uh, larger banks, who do you think is leading the charge? I mean, we're all working together now uh, in a way we maybe didn't uh, do sort of 10 years ago, but who do you think is leading the charge? So I think in the payment sector, it's still a real blend of the very large financial institutions, the big banks, and indeed the new payments architecture that we're expecting for the UK, which is currently in delivery through Pay UK. And so there's huge amounts going on right now in terms of that infrastructure. And so lots of opportunities for that partnering with the fintechs, providing technology to move things forwards. And I think that real juxtaposition is a really interesting one. And who's leading? I'd say the payment sector is leading. And genuinely, it's an exciting thing for me to be moderating a panel today on payments yeah. because they really are at the forefront of pushing the boundaries. And I think the regulators are almost catching up rather than actually really sort of taking the direction lead on this. And that DSCO letter that was sent out to some 290 plus payments companies a short while ago is an indication that the regulators are trying to keep pace with this fast moving sector. So payments wins it for me at the moment. Yeah, we've seen a real maturity in that space. Uh, and uh, one of the old uh, big questions is where does cash uh, fit into all of this? Perhaps you could touch on that a little bit as well. Uh, what's the future of cash here? So I spent 10 years in policy out in Brussels and when the politicians get involved in this, what is the future of cash? They'll tell you there will always be a future in cash. So, you know, the, the actual on the ground experience I'm seeing, even my eight year old mother is now using her contactless card and doesn't think twice about it. 
But the reality is if we start to say we're not going to have cash in the future, I think the politicians, not just in the UK but globally, will start to say actually that's a step too far. So I think we will always have cash, I just think the role it's going to play in society is going to diminish. But banning it or changing the concept to not having it, I think is, is, is not likely to happen, certainly in the next decade. Will it happen in my lifetime? I suspect not. I think the banks, the central banks and the politicians will still answer that older persons you know, cry for having money. And you know, we're seeing at the moment a cost of living crisis. Of course. And so many more people are saying to me that they've actually gone back to cash in their pocket because it helps them budget. And in particular, if you talk to students, they're saying cash in their pocket is allowing them to budget more mm. when it's become a much tighter environment for them to, to be living in. And so I'm not sure cash is dead yet, but I think there are lots of ways we can actually facilitate the use of alternatives to cash whilst ma still maintaining it. All right, thanks for that. And thank you so much for uh, taking the time to come and share your insights. I'll let you get back uh, to the busy event and good luck on the panel later. Uh, but Kay, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.